SAS Enterprise Miner offers a rich, easy-to-use suite of integrated data mining tools for creating and sharing predictive and descriptive models based on the analysis of vast amounts of data from across the enterprise. With an automated and intelligent method for tuning predictive models, SAS Enterprise Miner selects the best model from many different types and complexities. It focuses on building the least complex model with the most predictive power to gain valuable insights for better decisions with less time and effort. Predictive models created within SAS Enterprise Miner can be used to detect fraud, minimize risk, anticipate resource demands, increase response rates for marketing campaigns, curb customer attrition, and other customer issues. In this short demo, we'll use SAS Enterprise Miner to create a statistical model to predict wine quality, analyzing data from more than 6,400 different Portuguese wines. We're now looking at the interface of SAS Enterprise Miner 7.1 for SAS 9.3. We've imported a historical Portuguese wine dataset consisting of 6,497 observations, each representing a different wine. Each wine has been given a quality rating, which is stored in the quality variable. Each wine has 13 additional variables, but the variable we're most interested in is the quality variable. Since this is the variable that we're going to try to predict, we've set the role for the quality variable as the target. The other variables contain values for a wine's alcohol content, color, density, pH, and sulfide content, to just name a few. Since we're going to use all these variables to predict quality, we've set their role as input. Before we start building a model, let's explore our data. Here we see a chart of the quality of the wine, revealing that we have some wines that are kind of average, with quality ratings of 5, 6, and 7s on a 1 to 10 scale. And we also have a few wines that are highly rated, 8 or 9. We don't have any wines that are rated 1, 2, or 10. In addition, we have a discrete variable, color. So if we select the bar for red wine, we can see that there are about 1,600 observations here, as well as see the distribution of the red wines across all the other predictor variables, in addition to the quality variable. I can do the same for the white wine. Some wine drinkers prefer natural wines, which have very low sulfate content. Let's increase the size of the sulfates variable graph. By using a technique called brushing, we can look at wines that have high sulfate content. As we brush across the sulfate bar chart, we want to see if there's any trend with regards to quality. There doesn't appear to be a huge correlation between sulfate content and overall wine quality. Let's build some models and see if we can find some relationships in the data. So here we have a partial process flow diagram. Our first step is to add a decision tree modeling tool onto the workspace. We do this by simply dragging and dropping it on the workspace and then connecting the predecessor node to the decision tree node. We need to set a couple of options for our decision tree. We'll build a tree that only uses the predictor variable once. We're also going to create a fairly shallow tree that has a maximum depth of 4. We're ready to run our analysis. We want to use the data partition node because it divides the data and makes sure that we don't overfit it. It'll create training and validation data. After the data partition node completes, the decision tree recursively partitions the data using a series of rules to divide the wine into quality segments using the predictor variables. Let's take a look at the results, focusing first on the actual decision tree diagram. Up at the top, we have what's called the root node. This is all the data. We have our wine quality ratings from 3 to 9. And notice that we partitioned the data using training and validation. And we did a stratification to ensure that we have roughly the same percentages for both training and validation. We can see this by comparing the values within each column for each quality rating. If we move downward from our root node, we see that the algorithm selected alcohol content as the most important variable for predicting wine quality. So those wines that have an alcohol content of 10.85 or greater tend to have more of these wines that are rated 7, 8, and 9 versus the wines on the left, which tend to have wines that fit more into the 4, 5, and 6 category. Decision trees are very popular because they're easy to interpret. They continue partitioning the data until it can't make any improvements. 
We can see other variables that are important in predicting wine quality, such as sulfur dioxide content, as is density of the wine and the amount of residual sugar. This is just one algorithm for predicting wine quality. Let's take a look at some additional ones. Here we've opened another process flow diagram. In Enterprise Miner, you can open multiple diagrams concurrently. In addition to the decision tree, we've built some models like a regression model, a neural network, and also a boosted type of decision tree. We can even use this model comparison node to determine which model is the best predictor using several different statistical criteria. When we look at the best fitting model, based on minimizing the error rate in the validation data that we held out, we can see that our neural network model has the smallest validation average squared error. That means it gets the answer wrong fewer times than do the other methods. We can now use the SAS scoring code that was generated to score future wines as they come into production to assess their quality. We can do this in real time or in batch mode. SAS Enterprise Miner allows users to easily develop predictive models and generate scoring to make better decisions about future business events. Want to learn more about SAS Enterprise Miner? Visit us online. You might want to check out some related videos on data mining, text analytics, and forecasting.